Wiley really stands out in a number of ways. We're in Los Angeles. This is a culture-creating part of not just the country, but the world. The epicenter of the imagination, I believe, is here in Los Angeles. We really work hard on making students feel like they belong here, that you're part of this family. And we've been doing this for 115 years. We are like robustly Christian, unapologetically Christian. Our students come here as followers of Christ. Our faculty, all of our staff, we have this common commitment to be Jesus followers. This is just who we are. Our Christianness, our sense of belonging, academic excellence, and certainly the part of the country that we're in make Biola a really unique place. My name is Barry Corey, and I am president of Biola University, and I've been president since July 1st, 2007. A lot has changed from when I came here in 2007 till today. My name is Dave Holmquist and I coach the Biola men's basketball team. And I've been here 46 years, but I've coached uh, 44 years here. You know, you can't help but like Dave Holmquist. He is not just a great coach, but he is a, a deep thinker. He's a fierce coach out there and a competitor. Now it's like 1,063 wins, fifth or sixth most winning coach in college men's basketball history. Only five head coaches in men's college basketball history have eclipsed 1,000 career wins. The latest to join the club, Dr. Dave Holmquist of Biola University in La Mirada, who reached the mark last month. The spiritual emphasis was always here and the school has always stayed real close to its roots. But it's, it's just the school, I've always loved the school. I loved it as a student and I loved working here and so that's why I stayed so long. I just thought there was so much here that, that I felt was important and I wanted to be part of. He's just a, a great storyteller, great to be around, passionate about life, loves his kids. There's just so much about him that makes him such a great part of this team. I knew we really had a, a good group of players coming back, high character people. They're serious about their faith. They're serious about being students. They really want to play on a good team. I knew we were going to have a team that was going to work real hard and have the potential to do real well. Viola, trying to become first in the Pac West. It has definitely been a long time since the team has had this much star power. Up, loader gets it to go. Perhaps it is on the It's on tonight. And the pressure this team is under. It's expected to win. Obviously, the spotlight is on you. It's just a big stage. <laughs> what do you do, baby? <laughs> Super sick, thanks for having me guys. My name is Garrison Sherman. I am a small forward and I'm from Scottsdale, Arizona. My name is Daniel Esparza. I play point guard and I'm from Whittier, California. Yeah. All right, I gotta finish two and all. I have the Skittles, bro, you shake the Skittles. My name is Majid White. Shooting guard from Terre Haute, Indiana. My Shane White with the grown man fucking. I'm Ty Fresh Tillman. I play center from Fresno, California. My name's Nathan Medina. Uh, I play shooting guard and then I'm from Long Beach, California. It's Medina for the three. Yes! Ooh, I'm just a little set of you. So I'm Kevin Stone. I'm a shooting guard and I'm from Santa Clarita, California. Well, Daniel, he decided to come here, which I was real happy about and continue to be real excited about. He really loves basketball. He works really hard at it. He's got a great family. He's learned a lot about leadership from his parents, and he does a nice job with that. I knew God gifted him. I knew God had a plan for him, and I knew that God had a purpose for him in the sport. So these are just some of the accolades I got. Um, thank God. I'm actually the all-time leading scorer there at the high school. Broke the single like game scoring record. Just thank God every day for letting me have an incredible high school experience. You know, obviously you hear a lot about as far as coming in. He was our leading scorer last year on the team. This season, a lot of expectations. Definitely, he has a presence about himself, like as a leader. 
I'm just a, I'm just a goofball, really. I just mess around a lot. Yeah, Tyus is one of the goofiest dudes you'll ever meet. I mean, he looks all big and intimidating, but once you talk to him, you realize he's just a really funny guy. No shoes. Hey. If I'm not comfortable with you, I won't really mess around with you, but with the comfortable people, I, I'm a real goofball, so it's, I'm, I'm a clown, I'm a clown. Then off season, I really just try to work on my craft a lot around the basket, all that, three-pointers and all that. One of the things I really lacked was my conditioning. I didn't come in like ready for the mile or just in shape as I should have been. So that's probably one of the biggest downfalls I had. Tyus came in out of shape. He was out of shape. And he came in heavy. We ran our preseason mile. Everybody should be under six minutes. Guards should be under 530. And our bigs should probably be around that 545, 550-ish. Tyus was running a seven minute mile. If you're a college athlete, and we do conditioning and practice. You should never get lapped by another college athlete. Tyus knows, like, it was, it was really disappointing. And even with that, you can see how talented he is. He's strong, he can finish around the rim. He's athletic, which makes you think, like, if he's doing this at 240-something pounds, what would he do at 225 pounds? So right now, I'm just trying to push back into that, get back in shape. He's going to, you know, look back at coming into the sophomore year and remember when he was a little immature when he's a senior, 225, all conference, best big in the league. He got that type of potential, but, you know, the work ethic got to match the potential for sure. He does. He has all kinds of potential and he's getting better. And especially lately, he's worked real hard. And if he continues to work at that pace, he's going to be a great player here someday. Everybody loves Kev, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Kev's a goofy guy. We call him a robot a lot of times just because <laughs> he's a stand-up guy. He's really generic. Well, it looks like they're, like, what is this? What is this? Ronald McDonald. Always saying funny things, always has something to say. Did you give the mac and cheese yes or no? Yeah. Oh. Kev. <laughs> I love Kevin. Kevin's just so fun to mess around with. He never says anything back to you. He'll, he'll just take all the trash that's thrown at him and just laugh at it. Kevin has never taken out the trash before. Oh. He's 22 and he's never taken out before. I have taken him out. I've taken him out. I've had not him out once, not a single time has he taken I've done it like 10 times. He got toilet paper for the first time last week. Okay, oh. that's true. That's true. <laughs> My humor is definitely kind of unconventional, I would say. Definitely enjoy, you know, hanging out with the guys and making jokes and, yeah, yeah, making light of situations. Yeah, how many people are you making mac and cheese for? Oh, I'm, I'm making two uh, packages, so they'll be a lot. Can I have mac and cheese without pepper? Got to get them right. He has this classic line, just always being like, ooh. 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 <laughs> I love feeding my boys. You've never done this before, bro. I, bro, Stop I fed. Stop being a brand new person. For I fed. <laughs> Living with Kevin, it, it's difficult. I think uh, Kevin's the dirty man. Don't judge me, it's a little messy right now. We just got like a pile going on over here, which is cool, it's how, you know, it's a style. Like, like, look at the time to roast Daniel's room now. Come on, what is this? That's just my iPhone. You know what, my hamper was stolen actually. Yeah, I think an older guy like Kevin would have had something more uh, organized, but you know. Well, Kevin cares a lot about people. Kevin's got a real good heart. He's, he's got a soft heart toward people. He's a real good teammate. He hasn't been able to play much, and yet he's still really supportive. So me and Kev actually got a lot of history, a lot of history. I coached Kev in high school. Watching him in high school when he was young, like this dude, like he has a lot of potential, and he's just such a good kid. Man, we was at parks, training, in the gym. He was never a natural ball handler or a decision maker, but he had a smooth stroke and you could see him getting taller, start growing, getting more athletic. Kev and I, like our relationship fell off a little bit. You know, I kept pursuing college coaching, college basketball, but I've always followed his career. Coming back, Kev was not in the rotation. Something that Coach Holmquist made clear it's all about what your head coach sees and what he doesn't. And he makes the decision, and sometimes he may make a decision that's not in your favor. The problem on any team is you have 15 guys, and about half of them get to play a lot, and half of them don't. It's definitely hard. I mean, it's my senior year and uh, my last year, so you definitely want to go out with a bang, you know, as anyone would. 
I think the biggest thing I've learned is that, you know, you have to believe in yourself the most um, or else no one else is going to believe in you. So you really have to be confident when um, it may feel like you know, no one else believes in you. Kev's biggest strength is his biggest weakness. Kev is such a nice guy that everybody loves him, but unfortunately, you can't be too nice in college sports. You gotta be willing to bow somebody in the middle of practice. I think Kev will bow somebody and be like, oh dang, my bad, you good? And they're like, Kev, get back on defense. Like, don't worry about him. I've learned how to be a better teammate. I really push guys in practice and still compete at a high level, even though like the outcome isn't always what I like, you know, sitting on the bench. He still shows up every day. He still got a smile on his face. That, to me, like shows more character than someone who's playing 30 minutes a game from the minute they step foot on campus. When things are not going your way, can you still honor the Lord? Kev, I think, is like showing a ton of character by still showing up and fighting. I admire him. I, I think he's been a great addition to our team and our program because of the attitude that he's brought and the effort every day. He was a great guy. He's an older guy on our team, he's a leader, shows us the ropes. Yeah, I'd say he's more big bro out of anything. I just love learning from him and getting to talk to him about life. You know, love Kev, I'm always gonna have love for him. Last year, we weren't very good defensively. Coach has always been harping on us about that. He came in this year with a big emphasis on us being a much better defensive team. Defense has always been what we want to be our trademark of the program. Intensity's, it's high. We're talking. We're loud. We're always going at each other. Every day we're just doing different defensive drills. We mess up, we run. We want guys who are tough and smart and unselfish. Defense brings all of that out. Me growing up, man, I always thought just getting scored on was pretty embarrassing. The defense do win championships. I don't think you can aspire to championships or having a really good season unless you do that well. At the same time, you know you have to score points to win games, and so we'd love to have good offensive players, but we want good offensive players who care about defense, too. We went into this game pretty banged up with a lot of injuries. I had heel, foot, and then concussion. My J came in with a wrist. Eric, of course, his thigh was hurt. He couldn't bend his leg, which I, I don't think I fully understood the extent of his injury. I'm not even sure he knew. He was limited in practice leading up to the game. He couldn't be, you know, his normal self, like fully athletic like he usually is. I'm not saying he's Russell Westbrook, but you take away Russell Westbrook's speed and quickness and explosions, like, that's what makes him special. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us for a good one. We got Viola taking on Cal State LA. Going to that first game, it's something that you look forward to. It's a different level of excitement. You're anxious to play, you know. You want to show everyone your new squad, everyone's fired up, bringing in new guys, transfers, this, that. The adrenaline was there, the endorphins was running. I was very excited to play. Viola, 18 and 11 in their last season, 12 and 8 in the conference. Cal State LA, last year, 11 and 7, 8 and 4 in conference. So not as many games as Viola, but still having a successful season. I really got hyped during warm-ups because we're dunking in warm-ups. It was hype. It was hype. Player to watch for Viola is Daniel Esparza. He averaged 15 points per game last year. He's trying to do more of the same this year. I was excited to pack the stands for the first game. It was very loud. You could tell there was a lot of people. Definitely felt the energy. Especially the first like 10 minutes of the game, it felt like the place was rocking. Miranda for three. Hey, that one's good. Way downtown. Apple baseline mid range, good. Mid range fade, oh good. Medina breaks through the trap on his own. Drives in, hop step, and one. Great cut there by Medina. Getting off that energy, you know, Nate getting to the basket and ones, that, that's just something that we know we can do that any night. So we were fired up. Nate can burn it up. He can score in different ways. Medina for the three, yes! 
He got a mid range. He got floaters. He's competitive. Deep three. Gets it to go. Medina, the sharpshooter for this Eagle squad this year. Medina really taking this game over. Taking it into his own hand. I saw that first one go down, and I was like, okay. Like, it's going to be a good game. Then the next two end ones went in, and I hit my first three. I was like, oh, okay. And I just felt like I just had to keep it going. And I'm not surprised. Nate's a dog. He's an absolute offensive menace. To see him go out there and do that is not surprising to us, just because we see it every day in practice. A lot of ball movement here for Cal State LA. Allen now driving in, wide open. Easy left hand touch. Got ourselves a good one here early on. They were super athletic. We could kind of like feel them out early on that there was going to be a tough game. Mid range shot, gets it to go. Kulovic, good pump fake behind the back. Dancing through, gets his own board. And it gets it to go. What a shot. Wide open, and he got it up. They're going to count it. So wide open at the buzzer. So 32-29 as we reach halftime. I said Nate, for the Nate scoring, his scoring kept us in it. Honestly, I think where, the, where it comes down to the game is 12 turnovers in one half. You can't, we're on pace for 24 turnovers. And it's, it's still only a three point game. And then the post where we hit you, you gotta get it out, the ball's gotta reverse, get the ball, you turn and get it over here, and then you die, all right? Act like you want the ball down there where you'll be one on one, all right? How, how tough can this big dice get? Go out there, they're not, they're not bigger than you, you're bigger than that. Now we can get this game, all right? If we really go out and play, all right? We gotta be smart and tough, all right? We understand what we're doing? Make our way into the second half of today's contest. We knew it was gonna be a dogfight when we came out in the second half super flat. I think they scored like the first 10 points. Mid-range jumper's good. Great pass to Bell who throws it down. Cal State LA doing a really good job of passing the ball, sharing the ball. Viola on the other hand, not so much. And you can tell by the scoreboard. And so it's like our fault for not letting the game come to us. We got sped up by their press and their athleticism. Our offense just was not flowing. White, off shot, can't get it to go. Turnover was a big issue. This is the ball. Houston LA picks it up. Easy layup that battle out, stripped away. It's Fields. Gets it to go. Iola's starting to get a little bit careless with the basketball, and that's something you can do, especially down 14. You got to really see the injuries unravel. Ruck is going to get shaken up. That looks like it was a no contact deal. Looks like as far as it's going to be shaken up. They were pressuring us, and we had guys out there that couldn't even bend their legs. Yeah, I think, you know, we just started off pretty rough. Guys went down with injuries. I think that could be, you know, a, a deal breaker for anybody, any team. In every game, every season, there's going to be some adversity. Our dudes was faced with the decision to roll over or fight back. Still plenty of time left for Iola to make a comeback. Milovic, fight for it, gets it. Great save by Capo. And plays it in. Makes it to White. Wide open from three, it's good. Here comes the Eagles. We started like picking up the pace of our offense. We started executing better. Tillman in. Tillman there working both ends of the floor. That's what we like to see if you're the Eagles. When he plays well, that shouldn't be surprising because he has that type of talent. That's six straight in a row. Can't get it to go. Tillman down low and gets it. I was hyped. I know I was yelling at the, at the bench on that. All of a sudden, this game got really interesting. Just over a minute to go. At the perimeter, Bell shakes through the kickoff. Great finish. Bell wide open. Got it. Pretty much changed the entire outcome of the game. I just think that we sometimes play in spurts instead of consistently the whole game. We start off good, and then we kind of we kind of paced out. Viola falling. Cal State LA, it's too little, too late. We were all like, just really disappointed in the outcome. Big crowd, a lot of high expectations for us. We knew like how close we were with how bad we played. Kind of just understood that I just can't put so much pressure on myself. 
and then trusting in the Lord that he, he's going to protect me out here and help me play to my best ability because at the end of the day, I am trying to play for God as well, for the greater glory of him. It wasn't the best feeling, but I feel like I came out of that game just thinking, like, you got to get the next one the next day. Just move on. You know that's a loss, but move on and get better. It's definitely hard because, you know, right after the game, especially if we don't win, like you're kind of frustrated because you think to yourself, like, oh, I could have been in and helped us win. And I definitely get like upset and angry, but um, I've definitely gotten better at like learning how to handle those emotions. And because, you know, like what is being upset or angry about something going to do if you're not going to do anything about it? But I think if we had had a healthy Eric that night, it would have been a very different game because he, he was really playing well in the fall before the injury. You could tell, 28 turnovers. You know, you can't, you can't win no basketball games. You can be playing against fifth graders, you turn it over 28 times, you're going to be in trouble. My J is mature. He's mature. He's a grown man. He started over 50 Division I games at Miami of Ohio. He's a natural leader. There's Everybody wants to say they're a leader. Everybody wants to be a leader. My J is a natural leader. My first impression of him was like he's very laid back, uh, very mild-mannered. He's been through a lot. He's transferred from a Division I, so he's brought that knowledge and experience to us. When he's explaining things to us, like we always listen. You know, he knows like perfect timing, when to give advice, when to not. He's like probably the most unselfish, one of the most unselfish guys on the team for sure. I was born in Terre Haute, Indiana, a small town. I was there until I was about nine, where my, my parents split up in about 07. I moved to Indianapolis after that. Growing up, I, I played football, basketball, track, cross country. But as I got older, I started to, you know, think about which sport I wanted to take more seriously, and that was basketball. And so, you know, my, my brother, he's also my biggest supporter, my biggest critic. Um, I think that's that's who helped me get to this next level. Well, my Jay was recommended to me by a, a former player named Brian Weekly, who is from Ohio. And Brian is one of the toughest players we've ever had. He was kind of a, a mentor of mine, supporting me from afar. He always used to tell me stories about you know, Coach Holmquist and how great Biola was. When he recommends somebody to me, I take that real seriously, and he recommended my Jay. He, he kind of pushed Biola a little bit more into me, you know, seeking that out. That's how it ended here. You know, he's another guy who's serious about his Christian character. He's been a great addition to our team this year. My Jay, he's 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 an old head. I call him old head. He's a he's like 23. He's like the old head. He takes accountability of everyone. Makes sure we ain't joking around during practice. Given my age, you know, the guys call me old. I think that played a big part into me adjusting to this. Because just as I got older, I started to fade away from those type of things as far as like going out, partying and stuff. I think that was another reason why I chose Viola. Great place to, you know, express yourself as a religious man and a man of Christ, and that, that's who I represent, and I think that's why I chose Viola as well. I've been trying my best to build a portfolio in, in the modeling. I, I really want to get into that. That's a career I want to create and establish for, you know, the rest of my life. I feel like when it comes to modeling, you know, there is no age in that, as long as you know how to express yourself. Now I'm in California, I want to do some things I've always wanted to do. Can't wait to go to the beaches. Um, you know, I'm not a big surfer, but I would love to surf. California is like one of my favorite states, one of my favorite places. I'm very blessed to be here. I'm just trying to immerse myself all into it. Well, I lost both assistants from last year within a few days, and EJ has done an excellent job. EJ's had an instant impact, whether it's just team camaraderie, super funny. Hey, baby, you see me? You see me? Wow. Oh, no, 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 no. But with the X's and O's, it's, it's off the charts. Got it, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up. Secondly, this game, I just kind of spoke. I'm so hyped right now, let's go. He's 
help lead us in practices, multiple games, whether it's quick sets we need. Backside rebound, and we gotta have that. I can go to him during a game and just ask him, hey coach, what, what should we run right now? What should we get into? And he knows off the top of his head like that. DHO, swing it, and then we can get a post up out of it. He's always on top of it. I think every week, EJ sent a text into the chat with like some practice film, and it's always like, oh, look at how Nate's out of position here, you know? Come on, talk defense! Nate in the stands! What are we doing? I feel like the only other person that coach has ever gotten on is Tyus in the group chat. Coach Tyus is tired. You're tired, yes you are. If you're doing something wrong, I'll say it right to your face. I said it's gonna be It's not for him to, to attack, all right? We gotta get a stop right now. He does a really good job on the coaching floor. <laughs> <laughs> He's easy to be around. He's loyal. I don't know how my wife does it. When it be three in the morning uh -huh. and she crying and she need a diaper change or something, I'm like, yo, I got to meet with Coach Holmquist that in the morning I need some sleep. Obviously, like children, they're a blessing from the Lord, but bro, you see that sin nature early. Because an assistant coach, like, man, it's a selfless position. Nothing is about me. You know what I'm saying? It's all about service. It's all about serving Coach Holmquist, serving the players. You know what I'm saying? I'm just a bridge. He cares about us and you know he wants us to succeed. Go to his office, talk to you about personal stuff, basketball, all day. You haven't met my wife either? No, not officially. Yeah, I'll introduce you next time. Okay, man. Yeah. So that's been really like special to me to have a coach that cares about you. He's gonna be a very good head coach someday. What was the emphasis going into game two? Not to turn it over 28 times. Welcome back to beautiful La Mirada over to Viola Eagles. We got Viola going up against San Marcos. What Coach EJ told us, it was a must win. Like, we had to win that game. It was paramount that we came out of there with a W, especially at home for the second time of the year. Both teams off to a rough start, 0-1. You can't start off going 0 and 2. You know, Jake, I do expect a good game here. We kind of knew that that was such an important game because we can't lose two in a row at home. It looks like Eric Howland and Hunter Ruck are both out for this game due to injuries. That's why I'm like, yo, this is a must win. And y'all got to come out like that. Here we go, Viola, San Marcos. We knew right away what we were going to run first play. Milovich up top for three. Got it. Went off the ball screen, hit Max, wide open. He hit two in a row to start the game. Milovic wants another one. Got it. That's a back triple. And that's something you like to see a player get hot early on. Maxi. He ain't make one three all last year. He went four for five in the second game of the season. For three, yes. He is funny. Strong start for the Eagles. Has him all alone. Yeah. Maximo Milovic. Max cares, you know, Max is a genuine competitor. Made away layup, got it. Milovic, rebound. Milovic and one. Oh man, fuck it. Absolutely doing his own thing, taking control of the ball down there. Max is from Argentina. He has the desire to keep playing in Europe. Picked up by White. Stoviak tries to get him from behind, takes it post to post. My Jay, he's the guy we look to to just make the simple play. He's going to do all the, the little unnoticed things to help us win. Jumper, no good. Rebound by White. Not a lot of flash in his game, but there's a lot of substance. Definitely one of the best defenders on our team. White, great defense down low and forced a heavily contested shot. He knows how to make the right play on the court at all times. Of course, he hit big threes. White for three. Yes. White, wide and open. Let's it fly and hits it. I was just going to say, I want to see Maja White more involved in today's game scoring. It really showed in that, you know, whether it's running the break, playing defense, just coming up to me and telling me guard to guard, like what we need to run or, or the pace we should, we should be playing at. He was a very big impact that game. He had an animal in that was insane. He flew. White dancing through trouble. Off take, in one. Maja White with the grown man bucket. And I tell you, on a play like that, the bench is absolutely loving it. They are going crazy. That was probably very big impact. Just knowing that we have someone healthy and can do all that. Here comes Medina, leading scorer for the squad. Great take by Medina and gets on the floor. We got guys like Nate who, any night, he can just go off. Medina, over three. Who 
Rutgers in one county. But he's really taken a big jump in terms of his ability to score and score consistently this year. You know, great touch on the floater. We've always known he could shoot, but I mean, he definitely has been working in the offseason and gotten a lot more confident in his, in his shot. Matina trying to get another one. Yes, he does. For Nate to be Nate, he has to be confident. And he has to have like a little swagger about himself. I'm a quieter dude. I don't say too much, but I think this year I had to like step up a little bit. You kind of know that when he's out there, he knows he's the best shooter. Dina walking back with a smirk on his face. I think the tongue, sticking the tongue out, was just something that just naturally came when I wasn't thinking about it at all. Tough finish, gets it. I tell you, watching Medina fly through the air is something special. 25 points for Nathan Medina. Seems to be a party here now. We play best when we're moving the ball quickly, we're sprinting the floor, we're playing hard defense. Say you get B as a guard, you know Tyus, if he's in there, he's going to block that. Rejected by Tilden. He's going to run the floor and protect that rim for us. Four minutes to go, six point lead. Pulls up, Sparza. A finish to the right hand one. Fast B, what Sparza's best qualities are, it'd be everything about him. Good ball handling. He's out there, he's one of the fastest dudes on the court. Good shooting. Sharp decision making. Sparza has to hit it off. He does. It's good. He's got it all. Everybody that played did a great job. Anderson lets it fly to home go. Three seconds left in this game, so. You know, we got the W. What a game from Viola. After you get that first one of the season, it's pretty relieving. It always feels good to, you know, win. Things go great when we're winning. It's something not to be too overly excited about because the season just started, but it's something to be like, okay, we got one under our belt, and kind of like lets you know like what it takes to win. Mine's a four of five from the floor, two of three from three, five of seven, five rebounds. Yeah, my day? Amen. Amen. You know, you can't get high or low. You know, after that win or that loss is on to the next one. We wanted to take care of the ball a lot better and just be a smarter team the second game. Eagles move up to one and one. San Marcos down to 0 and 2. I think we learned a lot from that game and we improved considerably. I think we can really build them off these last couple of games. I think we're getting to the flow of things. I think these are a pretty good group of guys who want to, you know, get better, strive for something great as far as winning a, a championship in the Pac West. It takes a lot of conditioning, it takes a lot of effort. I think we got the depth this year to do it. We play how we like we've been playing, just hard, working hard. I think the biggest thing is the mentality and really persevering when things aren't going your way. We really just gotta lean on each other. We trust each other that when you're tired on the court, you raise your hand, come out for a few minutes, come back in. We really just trust in your team. A lot of the dudes, we just love being around each other. Just being together all the time has really helped us have like a special bond. I can't imagine a better place. The kind of people that you're around, the relationships you form, they change you more than anything. Everybody's kind to one another. They actually care about you. They want to get to know you. you. Get to talk to them about your own faith, your own journey, and I think it's really powerful. It's not just a basketball decision. When you come here, you know that they're going to get so much more. I want them to win. I want them to be competitive. I just want to see Coach Holmquist keep adding to his win total, you know, a thousand plus. I want to see Maxie reach his goals. I want to see Nate reach his goals. I want to see Daniel reach his goals. I want to win for them, and I want them to have the best experience. Just trying to appreciate these moments, man, because I know I'm not going to get these back. And not letting my emotions dictate, you know, how the season's going to go, but just taking it day by day. I've never tried to predict how many games we're going to win in a season. I just take it a, a game at a time. I want them to leave here feeling like the classes they've took, the friendships they've made, the coaches that they've had, and Homequist and the assistant coaches have made them better men.